I'm Tom Parker. I'm the curator of the Historical Society, and I'm with my great pleasure today to uh, welcome a vast number of uh, Putnam family descendants to the uh, re historic Reverend Daniel Putnam House. And so it's really a nice opportunity to uh, both for them to see the house and for us uh, the, to have the sharing of genealogical and historic information about the family and about the events that happened here and also about the, uh, the Putnam's through the years. And I'm Billy Post, I'm also with the Historical Society and I'm going to introduce my father over there, Bill Post Sr. He was one of the last residents of the home here. Uh, he lived here with Raymond Putman, so he's here to meet some of the Putman ancestors. My name is uh, Ken Putnam. I'm from Pocatello, Idaho. My descendants were uh, straight from Nathaniel Putnam, mm -hmm. and uh, then we migrated to Maine and to Idaho. And, and Ellen? I'm Ellen Putnam, and I was married to Richard Whitfield Putnam, um, and he was the son of Richard Irving Putnam, um, and that family is related to um, Rufus Putnam and Israel Putnam. Alina Taylor. I'm a Putnam from Richard Putnam. This is my mother. And um, I was, I am, the first granddaughter of Jane Putnam. And uh, what else do I say? <laughs> Um, my sister's been doing a lot of the research, so I'll let her cover most, but we now live in San Diego, California. Okay, my name is Lynn McDaniel. I live in San Diego, a direct descendant of the Reverend uh, Daniel Putnam, and um, my great-grandfather was the first Putnam to move out of North Reading. Uh, first he moved to Rochester, New York, and then he moved to the West Coast, to Oakland, California, and that is how our, our line of the family ended up on the West Coast. I want to show the book. I am yes. dying. <laughs> I am dying. <laughs> like to hear that. Like <laughs> my first question, from, and it's also from Ray uh, Putman III, is this accessible? Um, no, you see your own. This is not on Ancestry.com so, or anything like that. He, oh, that yeah. he might be able to. Well, so what happened was um, my, my dad's cousin, Chip Putnam, is um, out of the, the four sons of Henry Whitfield Putnam, yeah. my great-grandfather, um, one of the brothers' um, son, Chip, who Hen lives Hen in... Henry's <coughs> father was which Putnam? Let me, let me just show you. It's easier to just kind of point it out. So um, th this was my great-grandfather. Henry Whitfield Putnam. He was born in North Reading in 1885. 1885, yeah. okay. Yeah, and this is Norma, his wife, and yeah. these are the four brothers. My my grandfather, and this is my great-grandfather, and the four boys, Richard, Witt, Neil, and Ralph. Ralph lived in Fresno, and his son, Chip, yeah, yeah. is a federal judge and still lives there. Hmm. His wife pulled together this book, and she made six of them. Oh, wow. But she used various resources. Mm -hmm. There's a book written by Eben Putnam in the 1800s, and he did a lot of work. Mm -hmm. That book happens to be in the San Diego Public Library, and I haven't even gone. And that <laughs> library was constructed maybe 10 or more years ago. But so Eben Putnam is a resource, and she listed all of her resources in the back. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm sure that she had to pull it together into a cohesive book. Right. Yeah. Um, but since there were landowners all the way back, it goes back to the um, 10th century, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where there were um, Norway uh, on the right here, and some of these, these men were royalty, and that's, she used the symbol, the crown, to yeah. show who, who married French royalty. And then over here are the Putnams who were knights, and she used the knight symbols to show who were knights. And everything well, in red is dress. This is incredible job yeah. she did. Yeah, huh? because they were landowners and they were um, um, in service of the king, and they were given land in in exchange for being knights. And so uh, and so it starts really early, 
and all the red is our direct. So Putenham mm -hmm. is the name of the manor house in England, mm -hmm. and that's how they got their last name. Okay. Yeah. And so, um, and what, there were what, in this is in now what town is it near, Aurora? In England? Yes, in what town is it? That's where I got this coming from. Hertfordshire? Uh -huh. Hertfordshire. There's a map. Hertfordshire. Um, right. okay. So somewhere there's a map. But mm. here's some, some so still, mm. they're, they're still kind of tracking uh -huh. the, the Normandy, mm. um, you know, Norway, then it, then it all kind of centers around this Putenham Manor. Mm -hmm. And Bucks, Hertfordshire. Yes. I'm, I'm sure I'm butchering yeah. the <laughs> pronunciation. <laughs> and so we have Knights, yeah. Knights, Knights. So mm -hmm. Wilton Fitzwale, Richard Fitzwale, De Putenham. That was their last name, De Putenham. Mm -hmm. And so then we go, you know. Um, it sounds. And there, there's a, a picture of it. So story. these are the are these now French Norman then? If it's De Putenham, it must, sounds like it is. Yeah, but it, yeah. there's two lines and they they converge. Um, so it starts in mm -hmm. you know the the tenth century. Mm -hmm. The tenth century. My yeah, in the tenth century. Decided he he's found out he's related to and like the family goes back to they, Vikings. They connect. And he goes all oh, right here. <laughs> <laughs> he was excited. I'm not good Wait. at this kind of mapping. So I like arrows. Right. We're in the eleventh century yeah. right now. Yeah. 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 Right. So I want to go from sure seventeen. Uh -huh. yeah. This is yeah. 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 like yeah. 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 having to do with the But this is interesting. So when he found out he's related to a Viking, and he goes there. Now the name is hard to change. And I'm very first. Water every day. I've been here. Let's see, there's a sailing line. Sailing line. Right. Yeah, uh -huh. Sailing line. So, see, maybe it's the sailing line coming through. And Roger Day Putnam, still born in England, died in England, uh -huh. farmer, landowner, gentleman, I've knight of Shire. There's even well, a knight Templar uh, somewhere in here. Of Israel. Oh, wow. Being there's, called um, to the plow. Or, wow. No. One of them is called a knight Templar. The and you know and he died in 1600. Yeah, from Lexington. Paul Revere. Oh, gosh. And you can get it on. I don't think we're there yet. Amazon. Here's yeah. um, I John Putnam. Mm -hmm. So the names are getting normal. Right. <laughs> so what we're yeah. used to. There's a John Putnam. <coughs> so, so here's the very first. What year is this? So John Putnam was the very first Putnam. He was to come gender. to America. Yeah. yeah. So he was born in 1579 in Wingrave, Buckinghamshire, England. In 1579, and he died in 1662 in Salem Village. And we're gonna go to the yeah, cemetery. Yeah, yeah. And see him. Exactly. So he was the first, he was the first putman mm -hmm. to yes. step on the American shores. And he brought his four sons. And he inherited Did he? he inherited the estates of you one of them? Wow, oh, you're looking well, good for him. Yeah. Five hundred and four hundred. <laughs> so this is our common ancestor? Yes. Yeah. And then so when did you branch off? Well, when uh, he landed in sixteen thirty, he brought four sons. And some daughters, and I, they might have been spread out over a couple of years, but uh, anyway, Nathaniel was one of one of them. And that's so we're still common with Nathaniel. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. So oh, that's map, big then. Here's uh -huh. a map of Putnam of Salem Village in 1692 with Putnam and Potter's Hill and different um, wow. villagers. Key to Putnam Homes in Salem Village. It's color coded. And there's mm. all there, there's a cool map with a color coded with individuals' names: Captain John Putnam, Joseph Putnam, James, a Deacon Edward Putnam, Benjamin Putnam, Nathaniel Putnam, uh -huh. and all of their homes in Salem Village. That's before they came to North Reading. Right. And mm. so then we have, so then we're at Nathaniel Putnam, and over here we have Rufus and Israel, over here. So, so there, and they then were we cousins go down, or something. Yeah, and then we go down to Captain Benjamin Putnam, who was born in Salem and died in Salem. And then we we're talking about Salem Village and the witchcraft trials. Yes. Now, how were they relate? How were they involved in the witchcraft trials? Well, and Putnam Junior and Senior. And Putnam. Was uh, was that Nathaniel's say? No, I think it was Thomas's side. So there's mm -hmm. Nathaniel, Thomas, da da da, and I think Anne and come from Thomas. Mm -hmm. And they were were they accused? They were they weren't witches or the accusers, but they had an important part of it because they said that they were harmed. 
Oh. By the, the black uh, medicine woman. Oh, yes. Tabatha or mm -hmm. something like that. Right. And so they said they were harmed because one had two miscarriages and the other had oh. a miscarriage. Oh, right. So when the other girls started mm -hmm. going to her for medicines mm -hmm. or whatever, it could have been, she could have been a midwife. Mm -hmm. It was more than likely what it was. And so that I think that kind of got it jumbled mm -hmm. up. But then they said, well, they must be, well, I don't know if they're the ones that said they must be witches, but they were harmed by it. So the, mm. the pastor and stuff, anyway, they... Oh, Do you have some of that in there? So, yeah, so Nathaniel was born in Ashton Abbott in England. Yeah, Ashton And Abbott. then he died in Salem Village in 1700. He was a man of considerable landed property. His wife alone, Elizabeth Hutchinson, brought him 75 acres on which he built his house and established himself. Part of his property has remained uninterruptedly in the family. It is now better known as the old Judge Putnam Place. He was constable in 1650 and mm -hmm. afterwards deputy to the general court from 1690 to 91, selectman, which I don't know what that is, and always at the front on all local questions, whether pertaining to politics, religious affairs, or other town matters. And here's a quote. He had great business activity and ability and was a person of extraordinary powers of mind but I, this must have been written by Putnam of great <laughs> energy and skill in the management of affairs and of singular sagacity, sagacity. Uh, acumen and quickness of perception mm -hmm. he left a large estate that was okay so when his oldest brother died he succeeded to the position as head of the great Putnam family and was known as Landlord Putnam, a term given for many years to the oldest living member of the family. Mm. And here's those Salem witchcraft involvement. Um, Nathaniel was head of the Putnam family at the time and a well-respected elder in Salem Village. Well, Nathaniel no doubt vigorously supported Puritan values and was influential in supporting the witchcraft prosecutions with the Reverend Samuel Paris, who he had helped to secure four years earlier for the parish. Nathaniel was not inclined to be severe, and his goodness of character shows forth in marked contrast with the almost bitter feelings held by many of those concerned. So that he's painted as being a fair arbiter mm -hmm. during the time, but he also supported right. the prosecutor. So yeah. not not too proud of that. No. Um, and then so so it goes from Nathaniel to Captain Benjamin Putnam, who was born in Salem Village, and then I'm going to kind of. And then it goes to the Reverend Daniel Putnam, wow. who was born in Salem and died in North Reading. Be Be Benjamin Putnam, um, a captain, and was he yeah. in the uh, any of the um, pre-revolutionary wars, like the French in Indian War? Oh, he was. Okay, so yeah, he was yeah, a I thought so. church okay. deacon, yeah. mm -hmm. constable and collector, and village selectman. He was a prominent man in Salem and held many town offices. He held the position of lieutenant and captain while serving in the colonial militia. He fought in the Indian War. Benjamin owned a farm on the northern slope of Putnam Hill in Salem Village. And here we have the, our Minuteman. So, so this is a direct ancestor. Are we still? Are we still? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So how yeah, about you guys Daniel? are still. Okay. So that same line. Are, we're still, still connecting. All right. So <laughs> Daniel. <laughs> this is wild. Daniel father left him in his will 150 pounds for his learning. Pounds, huh? Pounds? <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Really? English. Yeah. English. yeah, because English. we were still, oh, we, 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 was, we, we, st we were still uh, using the English uh, monetary system for quite some time, even after we had, uh, we, even after we had, we had our own uh, monetary system, uh, that, that you would have, you'd, you'd, you'd have things calculated both in pounds and in dollars. So we, we, we kind of, you know, it took a while for it to, to uh, for it to change. So it's the first well, what, instance of Do you of remember what, what Daniel's salary was? He, he was in pounds and shillings too, wasn't Yes, it, it was. And of That's course, actually in the contract. And right? that, and that uh, oftentimes that uh, people who didn't have a lot of money and couldn't contribute actually any, uh, any hard cash to that would pay uh, the, um, the minister in firewood or in vegetables or in produce. So that was, so in a way it was almost a form of barter. And you'd say that so many cords of firewood would be equal to so much, so many, you know. I thought I read somewhere it. that part of his contract with the, the town as minister was, besides the house, 15 cords. Yeah, 
because uh, this was idea. because remember this <laughs> is the only source of heat. So if yep. you and also it's the only source of um, uh, it's your kitchen range. So that the so that you always had a fire in the fireplace no matter what the weather. And it was always going because you know, in order to cook all your meals or do any baking or anything. Ellen, just so you know, if you have time, I know you've got a busy schedule, but I will direct you over to the library and, and meet Pat. So that contract mm -hmm. is where? Is that in the history I think, well, section? It's, it, I think it's, it's, I think it's uh, alluded to in, um, in Reverend LePage's book. Yep. Yeah. I'm just going to read this one last one, and then we're going to skip forward quickly, yep. and yep. just so, because I don't want to dominate this whole thing. But, no. Um, so, <laughs> so, and Daniel attended and graduated from Harvard University in 1717, oh, and this is a, a Reverend Daniel Putnam, 1717, the inhabitants of North Reading Parish voted to settle and minister <coughs> amongst them as fast as they can, and in the best method they can, yep. and give them that shall be chosen 12 acres of land and four score pounds in building and manuring. The following year, they decided if Mr. Putnam be our minister. I'm going to skip ahead uh, because I wanted to get to, to Henry Putnam. And, okay. Um, born in, what is he the first one? Yeah, so, so the Reverend Daniel Putnam, born in Salem Village and died in North Reading. Um, and, and you guys know all about him. And then, um, and then his son, Deacon Daniel Putnam, born in Reading and died in Reading. So now we're switching from Salem Village to Reading in the 1700s, uh, 1720s, it looks like. Right, and remember, when you, a, and remember when you read North Reading and Reading that they're interchangeable because there was n North Reading was not a formal entity until 1853. Okay. Oh. So then, often you'll mm -hmm. see this area was, would be known as the North Parish or the North Precinct. Mm -hmm. And or or just or just or would be you know just referred to as Reading. So you would say Daniel Putnam lived and died in Reading, meaning that that, mm -hmm. meaning that he was you know out here. This is this is the last one I'm going to read. So um, and there's a picture of the Parker Tavern and a high school church in Common mm -hmm. in Reading. Mm -hmm. um, so Henry Putnam, born 1755 in North Reading, died 1806, was a farmer. He was a man of influence in the community and was chosen deacon of the church in 1778. He responded to the alarm of April 19, 1775, mm. when the first shots of the American Revolutionary War were fired in the battles of Lexington and Concord in Middlesex County, Massachusetts, and the British troops advanced on the American militia. Area militia were alerted, and Henry Putnam was one of many Minutemen to answer the call to duty. He served nine days in Captain John Flint's Third Reading Company, helping push the British back to Boston. Hmm. And that's where I'm going to stop because that's that's kind of everything. After that, gets more modern. Right. Farmers, Joshua Putnam. Are we still? Israel was in uh, that battle. Was he? Yeah. As a I went to uh, Lexington and looked through the historical society. Mm. Found his name there. Huh. As a Minuteman. Well, he and I've got a print of a painting that has Paul Revere uh, warning him or telling him the battle has begun and it's called uh, Call from the Plow. Oh. So he's out there plowing his field and they come mm -hmm. and say, hey, the battle starts and he just drops everything, gets on his horse and goes to Lexington. And at that time I think he might have been a captain or something mm -hmm. like that. He wasn't a major general. Now my husband told me that Israel Putnam was under George Washington. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is Second a book. Second command. Yeah. yeah. That's in a book mm -hmm. called 1775. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, a historical book called 1775 yeah. mm -hmm. that has you know, a lot of good stuff that. about Israel. Don't shoot to see the whites of their eyes. Right. <laughs> yeah, he's cred was saying that. Oh. So, so then, after the, uh, the Minuteman, uh -huh. we have Joshua Henry, George Henry, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, my great-grandfather. So I'm wondering, though, where did we branch off? If you go back and follow the red line. I think it was uh, after uh, Nathaniel's sons that, that I, we split off. I can't remember exactly. Well, I know which one I was, but um, I think it was Benjamin. That's Daniel. Nathaniel. Here. So there's Nathaniel. And that's where we split. Yeah. Split. Because... I think they list their sons or all their kids under the mom. Maybe. Oh. I don't know. I can't see. 
They didn't list the kids. Oh. And I don't have my. Oh, are these siblings over here? Well, what's this over here? Sibling, his siblings, but he's oh. saying that they branched off with the kids. So Elizabeth Hutchinson. Is this, is Benjamin and Sarah. Oh, Benjamin. And Sarah would have been my, my line. Okay. We're still there. Still after so that. So we're still, huh? yeah. So then after them. I bet Jacob. you it's one of these. And then Jacob is a grandfather. Yeah, Here's cool. Benjamin. There was another Benjamin oh. before that. Yeah, there was. Go backwards and see if there's a Jacob sibling. Because that might have been where it branched off. Up here, he, next to, is there a Jacob? John. John Jacob? But yeah, he, you're seeing right this one. Right there, yeah. And, uh, That'd be interesting. Did, so the president of Harvard, uh, Holyoke, John Holyoke, is that his name? He was married to a Putnam. Uh -huh. And he was president of Harvard for like 40, 50 years or something. Oh, wow. In the early 1700s. Oh, that's interesting. And then mm -hmm. on my side, my great, great, fifth great grandmother, uh, they had, they st helped start Dartmouth College. Oh. Back in the days, I guess they, after the Revolutionary War, they gave them land for, right. and that's how I think they settled further and further north. Because I, I know we I had relatives in Wilton, New Hampshire. Oh. They helped settle that, this, uh, Putnam and another guy. Right, I re remember that a lot of, uh, uh, people or or people who were descendants of French and Indian War relations got land settlements. That's how actually one of my ancestors ended up in uh, Gorham, Maine, is because oh. of an ancestor who was in the French and Indian War, and he became he became the first settled minister of Gorham uh, in uh, in the 18th century. It doesn't sound much different than what was happening in England. They were knights and. You know, in service of the king, and That's they got right. land for yeah, it. So exactly. it's similar to here. That's right. If you yeah. agree to be a, a deacon, then you get some yeah. land for it. <laughs> Business yeah. as usual, right? Yeah. Another one of my grandfathers yeah. in Rumford, Maine, I was up there and looked, and he was the first person married in Rumford, Maine. Mm. And he shot the first horse in Rumford, Maine. And uh, wow. he brought his tools there. Oh, right. Rumford is a, is a waterfall. Huge, oh. huge, like 175 foot cascading waterfall, and they used it for grist mills. Oh, and right, yes. Yeah. Stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, tremendous water power. Wow. And the family supposedly had a grist mill there before they sold everything and moved to uh, Utah. Hmm. So, wow. and that's why I went there. I had to yeah. walk along. And, uh -huh. So you're, you're doing a really comprehensive. <clears throat> Yeah, well, I, I researched this all this for ever since computers came out, so I oh, uh, pieced okay. it together. Oh, wow. and now, I'm, now I'm getting yeah. more and more. Uh, oh, right. right. And she provided, Carol provided a, a disc, but I don't know, people don't use discs anymore. Wow. <laughs> that has all <laughs> that on there. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. And she, that book is in here. I believe so, and, wow. and there might be more of an explanation here um, about the CD. Hmm. Um, but the, the, it would be family. nice to put that on the flash so drive. If, 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 if it helps the language. I, I would like to call them over there and see if they, they, they could copy a disc for us. Would we oh. be able to take a copy? Yeah, it'd be great. It'd be, oh, be great. Yeah. Yeah. We could use the disc to make a printout of the book. Yeah. yeah. That would be, and I, I don't oh, think yeah. that she, so did, uh, she didn't go to... Actually, anybody. you put it in a laptop. Yeah, and here we go, right here. Phil can make a copy. Did she say anything about the CD? This was our beautiful um, grandmother. Oh, wow. Jean, that's that your grandmother? Yeah. Wow. But she married into the Putnam family. She yeah. married into the Putnam family, yes. I should explain that. <laughs> oh, she was a journalist in um, Northern California. Yeah. Up in Northern California? Yes. Mm -hmm. There's a picture of her in there with Walter Cronkite. Oh, okay, so there's a CD <laughs> in the back of the book to allow our audition. Oh, so maybe it's not. Oh, so maybe it's not. She doesn't say it's a copy. Oh, I see. Should you obtain her house? Oh, okay, she is with Walter Cronkite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can just put that on there. We can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I haven't found it yet. Oh. Yeah. I think his are six copies. This was my dad. Mm -hmm. I grabbed it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And then my uncle Mark, who's a missing copy, which we could donate mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. this house mm -hmm. if we could find oh, it. Oh, that'd be wonderful. Mm -hmm. And mail it. And mail oh, it to yeah. somebody. Oh, that'd be so really good. Address. And, um, and then Chip and Carol um, and his sisters. Two no, sisters and Aunt Patty. That's mm -hmm. number six. Mm -hmm. So we have an aunt who might be making this trip. Uh, she lives in California, oh, wow. in Northern California. This is just yeah. amazing. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. Oh, so so happy if we find something like who, who, so, so you know, Mark, like Putnam, it Mark Neil Putnam passed away two years ago. I am ago. still trying to get the, the connection with Ray uh, Putman, who, is, so I like I said, he yeah, became, I that Raymond became his second father. Did. After he I took the family in and they were the last the family to live here, yeah. he became like a second father. Yeah. And how? And then so my that aunt that said that she talked to Chip, the, who, like Chip Putnam in Fresno, whose wife put this together. And he said that Raymond Putnam was a half-brother to Henry Whitfield Putnam, my great grandfather. But I never knew he had a half-brother, so this is all new to me. Yeah, because. The only history I've seen so far is that basically down. each so generation um, so that's listed down, it lists the action, the, the children, of Dan, like starting with Daniel Putman, <coughs> his 11 kids. Then I think it was Dan, was it, am I mistaken? Daniel Jr. was the next Putman in line that stay here at the house, and have yes. at the house. Yes. And it, Ian Irving, and it listed he his kids. But as the a, how the rest of them branched yeah. off, it doesn't give us that. And all the way down to George Putman, and at least George, uh, and I forgot his wife's first name, but Fuller was her last name, having one child. So my curiosity was did George, you know, remarry and have more um, kids? Maybe. Because, because I'll tell you this what he does remember, um, back in the 50s, the I mean the 40s. And he was a young child then, uh, you know, or a teenager. Um, Ray told him about his brother coming out here because the Putmans not only had this property that was originally deeded to them, they acquired more property. Mm -hmm. And and that his brother came out here from California to sell off his part of, of, of the property. Well, that's what it was. And that is that was that was if if you go down one more street down Havel Street the next left it's called Hill Street, and it's turns into Tower Hill. There's a tower up there, and I guess he had acreage, the backside of the tower, and he came back here sold that off, and and oh. left. But he never got to meet him, so it was like okay, oh. you know there's, there is. Yeah. Ray told him about a brother, but it, when I brother. read, it never meant the half brother. It just meant brother. Just, just mentioned yeah, brother, so but that could be. Yeah. So, so half brother, I don't. That's interesting. So I just, I, I, it's been, it's been eating me up a but little bit. Like how, how, how is he the half, <laughs> the half brother? Yeah. It, um, was, it would have had to have been. Uh, this the is mom him. or his the mom or the dad with yeah. the second marriage, yeah. which is kind of unheard of, right? <laughs> no. So his George, his George Palmer right here, and so the red is our direct. The, and the, the children are underneath. They just threw George Palmer in there because he's distantly related. He's not a direct. He's not, I think, he's, a cousin. He's a cousin of, of an yeah, ancestor that goes, and so deluded that, that they just threw that in there because he's a famous Putnam. Hmm. Well, here it is about a million. Amelia Earhart, too. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to sit back and just <laughs> go right <laughs> <in there. laughs> Amazing stuff. I don't know yeah. how they. Can you, do you know how much it costs for them to come from England over? 
it was the equivalent of a year's wages, and it was mm -hmm. like, uh, they might have said it was five shillings or something like that, or five pounds, but it was the equivalent of $25,000 per person. Right, yes. Wow. Plus any supplies, if you had to have a horse and a cow or furniture or stuff like that, that was all extra. Right. Wow. Yeah, it really, it really, it really, it really was. And, the, and of course, the, the, uh, the adventures of, uh, of, of just moving west. I mean, uh, I, I, totally unknown. Uh, totally unknown. I mean, I'm, my father told me that he was, uh, he and a friend went from Philadelphia, where he was working at the time, to, to California. And this was in 19, uh, 1930. And he was what they he was visiting uh, some friends. Uh, uh, his his friend that he went with had friends out there by the name of Ebright, um, and they were at a um, I think they were near Lake Tahoe, and um, and so they stayed there for a while uh, at the ranch, and they met Mrs. Ebright, who was uh, the the mother who was in her um, I guess in her may have been like in her. 70s or 80s and she told my father about coming out west in 1872 in a covered wagon oh, oh i mean wow. so so you so you it, it really we, we think of it as being a long time ago yeah. but but kind of you know when when you know my father talked to a lady who came out west in a in a covered wagon in 1872 mm -hmm. it was pretty recent mm -hmm. <laughs> i used to think my great-grandmother came from iowa to utah in a wagon and that wow. was in 1870. Oh, gosh. Wow. Yeah. But the Putnams, they were rich enough, they got on the train. So no. Yeah, yeah. 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 This is your... That's yeah. my great-grandfather, and so uh, my cousin. Mm -hmm. And he died in Arizona. Yeah, he, he's the one who left and came out to California following a job with the tractor company. And uh, my cousin, my dad's cousin, Fresno, said that his half-brother was Raymond Putnam. So we, that's where the mystery Did you do your DNA? Mm-hmm. Well, mine was 55% English, and my mom's side of the family is German, so it was 55, 45. Oh, wow. That's okay. a lot of German. Yeah. It's a split right here. Here it is. Which made us why I still got the, the same family. name all the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Plus, they must have a lot of boys. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. First marriage was Ann Holt. And they had two children, Henry Whitfield and Ralph. When did she pass? She passed in 87. And then, when did it, when? Did the Maybe second wife was Minnie Fall, Fall, Fall. Fall and, and, and they had Raymond. Oh. So there's a split right there. So it was George Henry Putnam had a second wife. When George and his first mm. wife was was a whole. Mm. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, one of our members, one of, yes. yeah, one of our members. Yeah, the whole was, really? was a big was a big family. No, I'm not a whole. No, but one of our members was a whole, and he's very much interested in the in the genealogy of he's the whole family. He's an encyclopedia. He's incredible oh with his, his history knowledge. Well, um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, guess what we found? <laughs> we knew, we knew about Holt, though. Because so that's, that was, that's what it's... But actually, the Putman on your side that came out here to sell off that property would have been... Um, Henry, I think I, I think Henry Jr. No, it would have been a great grandpa. But then I'm thinking. No, maybe not. No, I'm sorry. He you know, yeah, died. yep, it would have been, yep. Yeah. Well, passed away like in '69, '68, '69. Because only four, uh, only two out of the four boys survived past their early twenties. Wow. Mm -hmm. Two this, of them this passed stuff away. Is incredible. Yeah. What you, what, who, yeah. Now who put this together? So our, my dad's cousin Chip lives in Fresno, California. He's a federal judge. His wife Carol um, did gathered all the resources wow. and she lists all the sources that she used. Okay. Wow. And, yeah. and she put them in, and she starts out the earliest possible time um, and she gives us kind of a timeline. 
and, okay. and a little bit of information about the coat of arms. Mm -hmm. And then she launches and uses symbols and arrows and color coding <laughs> to show us exactly from the 900s all the way to to us, to me and my sister. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. So this is my dad, Richard Whitfield Putnam, and that's Oakland, California. But, but if you go back to my great grandfather, he worked for a tractor company, and that's why Oliver, he left. Oliver Tractor Company. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He was, um, so so he, the 1910 census shows Henry and Norma living in Rochester, New York. So that they finally left. Yeah. Uh, for the first time in centuries. Yeah. So he's the rebel. <laughs> yeah. uh, my my very proper proper great grandfather, who always wore suits and spoke in a very proper manner and was very polite and um, but he he followed his job to mm. the west coast yeah. and, and that's then, how we ended up in Oakland. That's how we were born. This son, <laughs> this son, um. Richard, Ir Irving, Richard Putnam. Irving, That's the, you know, he ended up selling um, golf equipment, so he yeah, got into the that. golf courses, yeah. and oh. it was like the big tractors. You say golf equipment, the, the, the golf clubs? But, but, no, I mean like, the equipment oh, the golf, golf uh, manicuring, yeah. manicuring the grounds like the, and all like the big, the big um, right. lawnmowers, but oh, you yeah. drive them, and it was made for oh, using right. for on golf awesome. courses, so. And then my husband no, went with time. his dad a lot with selling the, that. This is cool. In fact, my husband was the one that would, um, because he knew yeah, um, no, I just, so well, he I know be you guys the one to demonstrate the equipment oh, for his dad. Yeah. And his dad was a salesman. I'd like to get get you to burn two discs too, maybe one for. Oh, if you would, that'd be so cool. Huh? <laughs> so cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, uh, I gotta tell you, I have an ulterior motive here too. I'm gonna try to fan <laughs> the fire of next year, 300th uh, oh. anniversary. I will let you know about four years ago when I first got involved with these guys, I ran a post family reunion out here. It had about almost 200 guests. I'm gonna, wow. I'm gonna plant that bug in you guys. We would love to uh, have you guys come out here, except we'll let the Putmans contact. If, 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 you guys are, if you guys are starting to communicate yeah. Yeah. Uh, online with other relatives that you have found, this this town would love it. This town would would open arms, oh. you know. Um, and, and say, Come on in. Let's have a, have a reunion right here. Yeah. I'm retired. <laughs>